Hello everybody, welcome to The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. The County Seat's been on the air for about a year now, and usually we have guests on in a roundtable discussion, and we talk about issues of local government and how they affect the counties and the citizens of the counties of the state of Utah. But today we are going to take an in-depth look at jails and jail funding. When you think in terms of carceration, you usually think of two things, jails and prisons. Most people think they're one and the same, but they really aren't. As a matter of fact, prisons are run by the state and are designed to hold violent criminals like murderers, rapists, and people who pose a great threat to the community. Jails, on the other hand, are administered by counties. They are designed to hold prisoners who are less of a threat to the community, and they think in terms of weeks, months, and years, where prisons think in terms of housing people for decades. In other words, there are no maximum security jails. As a result, jail costs are half that of prisons, making them an economic viability for states during hard times. There's an advantage for the counties to house state inmates because we can frankly do it for less cost. It costs about $80 a day to house a state inmate in the uh, state's facility and uh, they're currently paying us $45 a day, which is a big savings for the state and yet an economic benefit for the county. Along with the savings for the state in the daily incarceration rate, there is also a savings of space within the prison. It's a big benefit to the state in that it allows the state and the Department of Corrections to have more uh, accessibility to more facilities. You know, it expands the capacity that we have in the prison system by allowing us to use some beds outside of the actual two state prison facilities. Um, and again, in return, they get a little bit of a boon to their financial, their budgets and their county systems. The counties also have to have a, a jail facility anyway because we have to operate a facility for our own needs, for our county needs. For us to have a larger facility that also uh, brings in some state inmates reduces our cost for housing our own inmates. It provides a lot of jobs for the communities. We're in Kane County today, it's providing 20 jobs here. There are other reasons besides jobs for the state to utilize county jail facilities. Using county jails can substantially cut costs, which is why jails can operate at a substantially smaller incarceration rate than the prison. The Utah State Prison in Draper at the south end of the Salt Lake Valley is a mammoth compound housing over 4,500 inmates. As a result, operating the prison requires almost 1,000 guards, not to mention the additional staff to oversee an operation of that size. In addition to the cost of managing that many prisoners in one location is the issue of the age of the facility. The state prison transferred to the Draper location in 1951. At 60 years old, many of the buildings suffer from poor energy efficiency and take more budget dollars to maintain. Containing prisoners also takes more manpower in a building that old. I think one of the issues is the state is just so large and so much bureaucracy and uh, the difficulty in managing the older facility that they have at, at the point of the mountain uh, leaves them with a lot of uh, extra costs. In contrast, most all of Utah's county jails are less than 30 years old, and many of them less than 10. They require fewer guards due to design and technology and are by far more energy efficient. As an example, Kane County's new jail uses solar and geothermal energy to keep their operational costs down. Jails also take less time to build and less money to build because they are smaller. But with all the virtues attributed to jails, that doesn't mean we should do away with prisons altogether. Your correctional facilities for the state in Gunnison and Draper, those are our maximum security facilities. It's a lot more manpower, a lot more security involved. It costs 80 to $85 a day to house an inmate in the state facility, opposed to $45 in a county. That saves the taxpayers money. But there are some problems with it. As an example, the counties have been receiving $45 a day for almost a decade with no rate increase, but county jail costs continue to go up. When we come back, we will examine the contracting process between the counties and the state, and we'll find out how this program actually may benefit the people who are in prison and make them more likely not to return. We'll be right back with our special on jails.
State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration. CITLA manages 3.5 million acres of Utah lands with the express purpose of furthering the education of Utah students while promoting local industry, oil and gas, even residential development, all at the same time. Through the careful use of trust lands, we distributed more than $22 million to Utah schools last year. The State of Utah School and Institutional Trust Lands Administration, building the state's permanent school fund. Picture yourself in Logan, Utah. We do winter right. What are the words that describe the perfect destination? Finding them all in one place is easy if you know where to look. Millard County in the heart of Utah offers ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and nature at its most epic. Millard County, Utah. Find out what you've been searching for. If you look up epic in the dictionaries, defined as heroic, majestic, or impressively great. Here in Kane County, Utah, we don't need a dictionary to tell us that. We live it every day. Stop reading about life and start experiencing it in Kane County. ATV adventures, Jeep excursions, hike a world where the Old West was yesterday and tomorrow is just over the horizon. Kane County, Utah, where epic is more than just a word, it's our way of life.